Welcome to the new English lessons. Uh, there are different uh, lessons that we have designed for a lot of different different people who have been uh, trying to improve themselves in English language skills, going to the different country or progressing to towards um, any academic purposes. Uh, if you they want to uh, progress towards um, higher education or if they want to uh, improve for general purposes or improving their language skills, living in the different English countries, or if they are planning to go to a different English country and live a successful life. So these lessons have been designed for uh, a lot of uh, different people who have different purposes in their mind. Uh, it's a free of cost and uh, it's um, competitive uh, lessons that, that will help you to improve your skills uh, in various sectors. Um, and uh, I'm 100% sure that if you practice along, you will not just improve your skills, you will improve uh, um, a lot of other uh, skills which are uh, actually linked to your personal progress and you will be able to teach other, your friends, your siblings, your children, and uh, of course, when you join the society, uh, and you will be able to uh, communicate and uh, express yourself uh, more effectively, and you can become uh, a part of the society through the integration. And uh, let's start uh, through the lesson, and uh, uh, let's see if you can uh, practice through the lesson, whatever you learn, make sure you practice and you will benefit uh, at the same time and for long, long terms. Uh, let's move on from here to share the screen with you here. And let's see if we can move forward. Now, Without wasting the time, I will come to the major point that will help you more than uh, what we learn and what we practice um, and save you a lot of time. Save your time and save everybody else's time and also leave you with some uh, spare time to practice. Uh, and before, this, before that, you'll have to understand properly because uh, alphabetical orders, a lot of people can understand and can read and write English language, but they don't value um, alphabetical uh, pronunciation as much as they're supposed to be. Um, as you can understand that pronunciation is the major part and it is a spirit of every language. Whichever language you learn, no matter uh, whether you learn English or your own language. Some people, they can't speak their own national language properly just because they don't have that level of uh, pronunciation. They, they did not improve the pronunciation. They did not understand the spirit of, um, of that, that uh, language. So we will start from the spirit of the, of the language. So you'll have to understand alphabets. Uh, you'll have to be able to pronounce alphabets properly uh, in order to pronounce the word properly. So I will help you to understand these alphabets, then we will move to a uh, more higher level, and that will help you to improve and understand uh, better in your, in your learnings. So you'll have to have a brighter mind for brighter learning and better learning, better performance in your, in your practice. So let's move on. For example, now, you, if you can see on board that um, there are alphabets order from A to Z. So when you read A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, some people can read H and some can say H, 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 I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q R S T U V W X Y Z. So a lot of my friends and a lot of other people living in different countries, they do struggle to 
pronounce uh, alphabets. Um, and I have identified some of these uh, key alphabets which people struggle to pronounce the most, which are under the uh, all these um, al under these um, main major alphabets within the brackets. So these three brackets, if you if you can see, three sets of brackets. So P B, T D, and K H. In some areas, uh, people pronounce H. Some areas people pronounce H. So for example, if you say hello, it's supposed to be pronounced H, not H. So you can't say hello. You have to say hello. So hello, H is supposed to be pronounced clearly. So because I live in London, uh, British English is slightly differently pronounced as American English. So when you look at R, we here in UK pronounce R and T uh, is pronounced as clear. But in America, R is pronounced R and T is pronounced RE, somewhere RE. So you will be able to understand, recognize these uh, pronunciation and then you'll be able to pronounce and understand, pronounce and help other people to understand you and you'll be able to understand others when you can understand and recognize the pronunciation of, of every single word. And before understanding, uh, recognizing the words, you'll have to understand the pronunciation of letters. So these letters, alphabetical letters, are much more highly important than just learning the language. So these letters are the spirits of the language. So you'll have to understand the different pronunciations first. So you'll have to remember <clears throat> these two letters and the three sets of um, uh, pronounce, um, difficult difficult to pronounce these letters, three, set, three sets of brackets. So these are six letters in total. You'll have to write it down on the paper and remember and practice these six letters because all other letters are easy to pronounce. These six letters are identifiably uh, difficult to pronounce. In different areas, for example, if you speak Arabic, if you speak uh, Eastern European language, uh, people struggle to pronounce these six letters. So, for example, people who speak Arabic, they use throat. The much more uh, attention has been uh, uh, expressed on the throat. They pronounce every single word coming out of the throat. There are, it's called halak. So there are no harufi halaki in English. There is no harufi halaki means that there is no such word or letter being pronounced through through the throat. So this is, um, you'll have to remember, it's a major and main tip that I'm giving you. So don't pronounce any English letter from your throat. Uh, that will help you to, if you remember this. Um, and keep practicing these six letters that within these three brackets, and, um, and make sure uh, write. You'll have to write on the paper. So, for example, I've given you a small tip: writing can improve your speaking speed. So, if you don't write, you can't expect to speak. If you want to speak, you must write. So, when you write, you can speak. So, these are the main. Um, techniques that you must use. So I will turn my picture video on a side so I can you can see the major main lesson writings. So these are a few advices that I have designed on uh, uh, on the slides you can see <clears throat> as uh, all languages have some letters and words. So you have to remember this when you read these uh, advises on slides, you'll have to read and remember 
these tapes. So when you use jaw in while you're speaking your language, um, you have to understand that you are not uh, using your jaws too much. You you are not using your throat too much um, when you speak in uh, English, when you're practicing English. So when you write your script on the paper, you'll have to uh, read. So when you are reading your own personally written script on the on the paper, you'll have to remember that you are not using too much of your jaw and too much of your throat. So these are the major parts uh, of um, uh, pronunciation. So um, when you use throat for voice and sound only and use tip of tongue for pronouncing words. So majority of the times you will be able to speak while using your tongue, tip of the tongue. Um, a lot of people when uh, speak different different languages, you find difficult to use your tip of the tongue. Many times, um, even English speaking people who live in English countries, they haven't practiced um, ineffective speaking skills. They have never practiced that, so they find difficult to speak tip of the tongue as well. So these are the major points, uh, highly useful um, techniques that you can uh, use and practice. Uh, use throat for voice and sound only, not for for pronouncing your words. So your, your throat will be used for voice and sound, but the pronunciation will be uh, generated through tip of the tongue. So must use tip of the tongue for pronunciation and use your throat for voice only, not for um, for pronunciation. So make sure uh, practice and remember this. Let's move forward. So key parts. If singular words start with A, E, I, O, U, you must use N. These are the major, um, I think, basic rules that everybody can understand. You don't, you don't have to practice any grammatical rules. Um, when you read books, when you write your own script on the paper, you will be able to uh, use an before any uh, vowel word. For example, um, um, if the one word is starting with a, and any word starting with E, I, O, U, so you will use N. So we will move forward quickly because um, there are lots of uh, people who can uh, speak, understand, and write as well. So we have to move to uh, the, the stage that you will find more useful. So these are uh, these lessons are consi uh, consist of um, uh, main tips that improve your uh, speaking and uh, writing and understanding skills. So the question it is, is there? So you'll have to understand the, these differences between the questions and answers. Um, a lot of people who live in Asian countries now, um, English language is like, um, it's kind of a, uh, an international business language. So all of Asian people can understand and speak English language, even in Middle East, even in European countries, but they need more, um, more skills, more techniques. So these are major techniques, small techniques that will improve your understanding in improving and developing your skills. So it is and is there. So these, these are the, the the question styles you'll have to understand and answers styles you'll have to understand is, is it or it is. So it is will be used for answer. Is it is for the question. So is there and there is. So is there is for our question. There is, there is, is for answer. So these are questions and answers. You'll have to understand these tips. If you are from beginning, if you are in the beginnings of level, if your level is the beginnings, 
for example, if you are um, uh, just before the um, elementary level, so these tips can give you uh, more in-depth understanding and you'll have to remember these because a lot of people have noticed that they, they struggle to remember uh, questions and answers uh, uh, techniques. Questions, what is the question and what is the answer? They just speak whatever comes in the way. They just keep on speaking. They don't remember whether uh, they are trying to express the answer or whether if they are trying to express the question. So you have to remember this. So asking in polite way, the would you or could you, do not memorize dialogues. So these are, uh, that's in my main advice that I can help you through. Do not memorize dialogues. A lot of people uh, memorize dialogues and they speak the similar way that would way of the dialogues that they've uh, remembered. So you must create sentences by your own self and write it on the paper. So that is much better and easiest way to improve your language skills. If you're not writing, you are not speaking. So you have to remember this, as I said before. So create sentences by your own self. For example, whatever you are thinking, write on the paper that will create your own personally uh, generated um, or personally produced uh, dialogues. So you don't have to uh, use uh, dialogues written by other, other people. So create, uh, uh, create your own dialogues. Uh, whatever you are thinking, write it down and produce your own dialogues. Uh, that will uh, help you if it's your style of learning. Let's move forward. Listen, read, and write. So you have to remember this. Listening, reading, and writing. You have to, you have been through the similar situation when you were um, at the age when you couldn't speak, you couldn't read, you couldn't write. But what could you do? You could listen. When you were at the age of your childhood. You couldn't speak, you couldn't read, you couldn't write, but you could listen. You learned the language through listening. You didn't learn a language from reading or writing. So your childhood, the same skills that you will apply while you're learning every new skill. So listen, then read, then write. These are the three major techniques you'll have to use in your learning and practice. So do not focus on, a lot of people pay too much stress on spellings and grammars. When you go to different English speaking countries, a lot of professionals, a lot of police officers, they make grammatical mistakes. A lot of solicitors, barristers make grammatical mistakes spelling mistakes. So spellings and grammatical mistakes are not um, a major point when you are learning because you are learning. You are not uh, performing uh, anything. You are not writing any book. You're not writing the newspaper. Okay. So you don't have to uh, pay too much attention on your spellings or grammars. Don't do it. That will uh, you'll be you'll be wasting too much of your energy on on spellings and grammars. Don't do it. Do not focus on spellings and grammars. That's full stop. Nobody learn spellings or grammars. Nobody learns spellings and grammars. So you have to read and remember. Practice one hour every day. On the paper. So you can't practice with your friends. You can't practice your siblings. You can't practice practice your, with your family. Everybody have busy schedule. Everybody have busy time. Everybody have their own personal interests. They are not interested to talk to you. 
they're not interested to listen to you. So you'll, you'll have to find your own way to practice. So how would you practice? Nobody's, nobody's listening to you. Nobody wants to listen to you. So how would you practice? Write on the paper. Simple, simple answer. And much more easier, write on the paper. Whatever you're thinking, sit down for one hour, write on the paper. That's the easiest way. So how and what would you write on the paper? Introduce yourself. You don't have to go around in the street or to your friends or families or siblings, introduce yourself. You can't do it because they all know you already. So you will have to introduce yourself on the paper. So introduce yourself, ask yourself questions and answer on the paper. Okay, write your personal introduction on the paper and correct mistakes by your own self. Because once you write, for example, you have written half of the page. After writing half the page, read, read it again and you'll be able to identify some of the mistakes. So that's the best way to correct your own mistakes. So give headlines, keep it separate. And uh, also, what would you write after that, after introducing yourself? So you'll have to remember two major steps. One is personal, educational, occupational. Because when you look at everybody's life, everybody have these two major uh, uh, kind of um, uh, major rulings and major problems, major issues and major activities, especially uh, in their life. So every activity will have different um, um, different different uh, variations like when you uh, explain your your yourself when you explain your uh, your own education you'll have to focus on your education only if you want to introduce and uh, explain your occupation your your, what you work in, what you work, or your employment, you'll have to focus on your employment only. So you don't have to mix. In everyday life, people mix up everything. When you're talking, when you're explaining yourself, people mix up um, their educations, people mix up their uh, work and employment, they mix up with their families' uh, discussion, they mix up with everything so there are too much of jargon so avoid jargon communication remove the jargon from your communication nobody wants to listen to you your jargons so these are the major weaknesses in your communication don't add jargon make sure if you are talking about your personal introduction you wouldn't be introducing about your daily activities, <clears throat> what you do when you wake up and what you do when you go to sleep. You will not be discussing with, um, with your friends or with anybody else. You will feel that it is your personal privacy and also you will not give enough um, uh, value to it when you're writing. So make sure what is more personal and what is more like privacy type of um, uh, activity, you write it down on a paper for your own self. And you'll have to focus if you are talking about the educational purposes, uh, if you are introducing your educational activities, you'll have to focus, write one page on your educationals. Write your one page on your occupational activities. So whichever activity you are introducing, you'll have to stay focused in within the same activity. You can't mix your personal introduction to your edu educational activity. You can't mix your educational activity to your employment activity. So these major parts that you'll have to understand. When you break down your educational activity first and your work activity after that, then you can join it together 
with the paragraphs or with the papers, it will make sense. Then you'll be able to understand your explanation. So similarly, you move forward to the next stage, family, introduce your family, make sure keep it separate and focused, introduce your friends, don't mix your friend's introduction to your family's introduction. So your likes, dislikes, positives, negatives, make sure you keep it, keep using positive words when you're introducing. So your introduction, everything has to be um, accurately and positive, positive words. So make sure you are adding some answers and questions. So ask question, ask yourself some questions. Make sure you write it down. Whichever question you're building, you write it down on the paper, the same paper and the same answers. So keep your pronunciation correct. When you, after completing your writings, read it to yourself. When you read it to yourself, you'll be able to understand your mistakes. You'll be able to understand how to pronounce the words that you've written. So you'll be able to understand and recognize the sense of spirit, whether whatever you're reading, does that make sense? Does that make a um, sensible sentence? Uh, if it does, then it is correct. Or take it to somebody to correct it for you. It helps in understanding and being understood. Let's move forward. Personal focus mix. So same I have explained to you before. So for example, um, when you introduce anything, so you'll have to introduce in the way it's an example for you. So if you can read and understand where people make some uh, uh, common mistakes and um, an idea that you can use through the same writings, if you can read, or for example, I'll read it for you, and then you'll be able to understand uh, and you can get an idea how to write some of the personal introduction and then you can move up to your educational and occupational and then you can move to your family and personal friends introduction and then you can um, complete your your practice so for example if you say my name is dean i, li I live in a nice area of historical city lahore um, i attend uh, jamaat that's uh, introduction for some uh, Lahore, uh, Pakistan people who can um, understand if they practice uh, Islam. So, for example, people go to the mosque, uh, they practice uh, pray. And uh, similarly, uh, people who go to churches, um, and, uh, a lot of other people who can go uh, for their own um, they own pray, uh, they can own, they can they can continue their own uh, spiritual practice, med uh, meditation, etc. So, for example, you say I live in the city of Lahore. I attend Jamaat for Salat al Fajr in my local mosque. So, similarly, so when you introduce yourself, these are the ideas that you have to mention. What you do, what are your actions? So your actions have to be written first in every sentence. So, for example, if you see that are written, I live, living is an action. So attending, as you can see, the second sentence says, I attend Jamaat. So attend is an action. So every sentence has to be cleared with writing your action first so every action comes first whatever you do comes first and the names and everything else comes after that so for example i live in a nice area a historical city lahore i attend attending is an action you go and attend always comes first, then rest of the 
sentence you can complete by adding what you attend, what for you attend, and where the place is. Okay, so similar uh, advice I have written that action come first in every sentence. So this is what you will have to remember. So next, I plan my daily activity one day before. So similarly, you can understand the plan. So planning is your activity. Plan is your action. So daily activity one day before. So daily activity, activity means that it's just a word. It is not, when you just write activity, just a word, it is not connected to directly to your actions. So your plan is connected directly to your actions. So this is why we've written plan first. We can't say daily activity I plan one day before. You have to say I plan my daily activity one day before. So I complete. So again, so you have to remember action is coming first. Complete is the action. You complete. I complete my responsibilities on time. Action is coming first. You have to remember this. It's a very, very important technique to use to become an effective speaker. Understand? Remember, use actions first. Okay? My old friends... So you'll have to remember this, my old friends live. So living is activity. So you'll have to, whatever you're saying, you make sure that you are going to use whatever you're introducing, my old friend, you are introduced to my old friend, you, that you have used that word, that you are connecting to your actions. So what is the word that you're going to connect to your actions, either I, you, we, they are. So these are the words, for example, you said, I plan, I, you live, I live, they live. So these are connected words that you kind of introduction pinpointed and then comes with the action. All my, my old friends live nearby my house. So we go, action. So you'll have to remember this, we go to school together and now and as uh, you can see the same sentence we go to school together and again an action play so you can't say and at evening play so you have to say and play at evening so you'll have to remember to add action first whatever you're going to say say an action first so not at evening play so you have to say play at evening action always come first that is common it is absolutely common and um, more important technique that to use if you want to be noticed by others that you are a sensible person so if you want to be noticed by others that you're a sensible sensible speaker you'll have to use actions first my favorite food is beef with vegetables. I have learned from my mother about how to cook food and wash dishes. So when you are a kid, children always work in the kitchen, helping the parents, washing dishes, cooking food. So you will learn that way. So you'll have to remember this to use when you are introducing yourself and your, your actions, your activities, you'll have to use actions Every word that's connected to actions comes first. I can choose. So when you choose something, when you select something, selection, selecting something, that's action. I can choose special spices and ingredients. So when you use action, um, all of those words representing action first, you will be able to adjust your sentence and um, adding more sensible meanings to your sentence 
easily. The other people will understand you easily. So remember, action first. So let's move forward. I discuss school lessons with my friends. So discussing when you having you are having a discussion. Discussion is an action. So I discuss school lessons with my friends. My friends. Now you can see the <clears throat> next sentence that says my friends advise. Advising is an action. My friends advise me with their opinion, not their opinion, they and they. So there's a difference. You can check and you'll be able to understand how to use uh, they and they. So like um, uh, when you say they is something is owned by others. So um, when you use they, the both sound absolutely similar. So it's called homophones. Every, any word that sound similar to the other word is called homophone. So there are lots of homophones you'll, you'll encounter in the language. In every language have homophones, every language have lots lots of words that sound similar so you'll have to understand that whether what is the sentence what does the sentence means so that's when you'll be able to understand the correct word being used so if you're saying my friends advise me with their opinion so you'll be understand that which words been which word had been used whether they or they which they, the E-I-R or E-R-E. -E. So you'll be able to understand that. So this is, you will have to understand homophones, differentiation of um, the similarity within the sound. I like to share my knowledge and ask others a question to tell me about what they think. So as an example, you'll have to rem remember if you are using a small sentence or if you're using longer sentence so you'll have to remember using your actions first so similar i have added i like to share action my knowledge and ask others a question to tell me about what they think i will i would like to think and recognize myself therefore uh, my preferred, preferred mood, mode of discussion is the reasoning, such as philosophy of Quran, because if life and death exist, then the God exists. So these are the, some uh, examples that you'll have to understand, uh, language examples. Uh, some of these, uh, which kind of technical meanings behind the text you don't have to uh, go into the depth of that if you really want to study you can study philosophy of Quran then you can understand more in depth that is a different matter um, if you really want to practice the language you can use that technique as well do not pretend so as you can see a lot of people who copy other people's way of um, other person's way of uh, way of talking? So you'll have to remember this. If you pretend or copy somebody else's accent or sound, you will lose your own personal uh, values, your own personal quality, your own personal uh, opinions, because you're when you express your own um, your own thinkings you will not be able to express your own um, your own words properly so do not pretend or copy other people's accent or sound because a lot of people sound differently some people have um, sound that you maybe not like 
a lot of people who produce sounds that a lot of other people don't like. So you make sure that you pronounce your own sound. This is why your pronunciation, once you achieve um, uh, and improve your own pronunciation, you will be able to uh, speak the sentence with your own sound and with your own style of communication. So this is the main reason of improving your pronunciation is that you'll be able to express your own personal quality to other people. Okay, so keep your sound as natural as you are. For example, when you look at a lot of people copy Indians, some people copy Africans, some people copy belongs to somebody belongs to different country. So that is not good. So that will show that you are listening to that kind of person or you are listening to the person belongs to that society. So this is, you'll have to remember. So for example, Indians, which is next to Pakistan, when they pronounce development, they pronounce development. So when you, when you hear the similar word from somebody from Pakistan or from Afghanistan or from Eastern European countries, and when they say development, I can straight away recognize that this person had been listening to somebody from India. So this is how you can determine that this person is associated with the other person belongs to that society. So development is being pronounced as development means that the person's from different society, not from English society or not, or the person had not practiced independently and this person does not speak or does not want to practice, had not enough um, uh, lessons or had not received an effective teachings, for example. So it is development, not development. So you'll have to remember this. So when you move up to the different um, sounds, like Africans, in Africa, people have different um, languages. So they speak differently. So they have French, uh, a lot of African countries speak French. So when uh, people don't practice the language pronunciation spirit, they can't pronounce the word properly. So this is why, for example, the word is situation. A lot of people can speak situation clearly. But when somebody who is from um, Eastern European country, they can normally speak and say situation clearly. If that person is pronouncing situation as a situation, it means that person had been associated or listening to the person from African countries. So this is how you determine and you'll have to be careful not to copy anybody's sound and not to be determined um, by other people as a valueless person. So you'll have to hold your value by not copying other person's sound and by not copying other person's accent. So remember this. It is situation, not situation. So remember this. So Americans, similarly, we say better. UK, we say better. So they say better, better. So, which is not bad, but still, when you are speaking, when you're holding an effective communication with somebody where you want other people to understand you clearly, and you want to express your clear message, you can't copy other people's sound. So you can't say better. The other person will not understand you. 
So you have to say better, not better. So you have to remember this. Let's move forward. So these are some examples I have um, produced um, for a lot of different people to understand and practice. Um, like when you introduce different countries. So every country uh, follow different um, set of um, social standards. Uh, so similarly, the Pakistan people have self-respect. So they don't abuse other people. So they have more friendly approach to everybody. So India, Indians are neighbors. So we have about the similar um, kind of language understanding so we can understand each other. So you'll have to understand all, all, over. So it's kind of homophones, as you can remember um, in our previous lesson. Um, so these homophones, they, uh, you'll have to remember these examples. A lot of people encounter these three words. And um, um, when they are listening to another English speaking person, uh, they struggle to understand uh, paragraph, even sometimes sentence, especially when the two, three sentences have been um, joined together, people struggle to understand because there are uh, different, different words being, different homophones being used um, within different sentences. So you'll have to remember if you are um, listening to the other person, you'll have to listen carefully. Uh, you'll have if you have practiced um, your um, um, your accent and pronunciation, you'll be able to understand the sentence, and then you can determine the difference between homophones. So these words that look and sound similar, but they are spelled differently. So Afghanistanis have unity. They have their own set of culture. So cultural rules, so they have their own rules. So they represent themselves that Afghanistanis have unity. So there are some histories linked to it. Arabians have understandings, so better understandings of some people say of Islam, maybe philosophy and psychology of Islam. So Saudi Arabian people have different level of psychological understanding of Islam. So there's different uh, set of rule within their own society. So Europeans have different uh, strengths and different weaknesses. So similarly, economically and socially. So economy have weakened secretly. So some people say economy, some people say economy. So either way you will say economy or economy economy have weakened secretly because economy can't be weakened straight away openly. It has to be go slow before public notice. <laughs> so these are the, some tips that you can, you can understand through what I'm trying to express. Um, there are a lot of um, histories involved in, in Britain, Europe, and Asia. Uh, the history is interlinked. Uh, there are moral histories that whole world, it's not just Britain, whole world have different set of rules toward, towards moral histories. So a lot of countries lose moral histories. It's not just a one country. So it doesn't mean that one book says that something that you've, you've been reading through something that um, um, does not represent uh, another society and says something against another society and in favor of the one society, you can't, and that book writer can't determine through the one book. So there are always histories, historical uh, changes through all, um, all, all times. 
So for example, Americans have struggled to resolve slavery. Uh, Australians are famous in sports, so they are strong people. Introduce other people, write an introduction about others by use of headlines. So personal life and activity, friends and family, likes and dislikes, food and travels, interests for sports or business, interests by percentage, personal interests, or some spelling. So you'll have to understand interests interests both are the same personal or by percentage some people say interest so what is interest interest is that when you agree with somebody that is interest everything else is interest interest by percentage a personal interest my personal interest i pay 90 percent interest to bank a bank pays 15 percent interest to me so that's interest personally in my personal interest to pay 10 percent interest so my interest to agree such as different different agreement so there are similar interest so interest, as you can see, the last word, interest, that's in Urdu. So I think we have reached to a maximum uh, time span of our lesson today. I'm sure that if you practice that what I have advised you, I will come back to you with the next lesson. I'll bring more fresh techniques, uh, more effective um, and uh, we'll give you more details and uh, we'll help you to uh, produce more effective work. And uh, I'm sure that you will continue uh, your practice and uh, we will uh, move forward together, inshallah. Okay, thank you.